Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, let's talk about Future Builder. So, Future Builder relies a lot on futures, and we've went, we've gone over that in previous videos, but not with respect to Flutter. So, if you haven't gone through those other videos, if you're kind of new to Dart, you've no other languages, or you just want to jump right in, great. So, let's just review futures briefly, okay? With respect to Dart specifically and with respect to Flutter. So we talked about a stateless widget, right? So a widget that you build without pre-existing information or a state or without previous values to anything. So you just go ahead and build it. Then we talked about a stateful widget where you have to have a particular value that's not, you don't have to, you should, that's why you use it, a particular value that's changeable. So the, it could change a value here or there and it will change the state or the values of the widget itself. So you have to have some memory from somewhere else in order to build and change the widget overall. Then uh, there's a future builder, which is a subset of the stateful widget. It's a type of stateful widget where what if you don't actually have the value to begin with? So a stateful widget, you have a state, right? It exists, there is a state when you build a widget. But what if you don't even have a state? You don't even know what the heck is going on here, right? For example, I'm going to click on a widget and it's going to access some information on the web, right? And if your connection is quick or slow, that's important because what if it's really slow and it takes you five minutes to access that information? Well, that may be a problem. Normally what we've done with stateful widgets, we've used what we call synchronous programming. So I click on something and something happens. I do something and immediately the, the, the result is right afterwards. But what if, for example, I clicked on a button, it was going to access something on the internet but the connection was slow. What would happen was, while I'm downloading the information, let's just say it's a one gigabyte file, while I'm downloading this information for the past 30 minutes, the application would freeze, right? Because it's waiting, it's not really frozen, it's waiting for that information to download. That's synchronous. I do something and I'm waiting for the result. That's really not gonna be acceptable for the user because they're never gonna get past that click. They're gonna think it's broken, but it's really just waiting for the information. So what we wanna use is something called asynchronous programming. So in other words, I click on something, something happens, so it's downloading, but while it's downloading, I could start doing other stuff, but, once it's done downloading, then the program will say, oh, by the way, it's done. Let's start moving on and do something with that information you just downloaded. Okay? So that's when you do that and you're waiting for something, whether it's from the internet or the hard drive, that information that is not there immediately, it's there in the future, is called the future. Okay, so just keep that in mind. If there's ever going to be some time there's a latency, it's probably going to be a future. Inform getting information from the hard drive, information from somewhere like else, information like a, like if you want to access the camera, things that you have to ask for, you have to wait for a little time and for get information back. More than likely, that's going to be a future. Okay, so let, let's keep that in mind and when we build this stateful widget. Um, okay, so here, my app stateless widget waiting for something. The class here waiting for something. It's a stateful widget, like I said, and we're gonna create state. So, and right here, what we're gonna say here is widget build a future builder right here. And then there's gonna be initial data. I'm just gonna say working. And um, that's just, it, this could be anything. It could be a integer text. It could be some something else. Uh, it, it, you could just put anything, whatever you want here. But that would be the initial value, the initial information for the future builder itself. You don't. You could have it no. Then you're going to access a future, which is going to be down down here. And then we're going to make the builder. And the builder is going to have the context, of course. And then we're going to put snapshot. I just put snapshot as the variable name because I saw that on some place. When it, when it gets this information, this is the information you get from the future, okay? And then we're going to return it, and it's going to be snapshot.data. So we're going to remove the future out of it and then change it to a string. I don't know why you have to change it to a string in this particular example, but you do, okay? Or else you're going to get an error. So what is this future? Future is right here. So future, I'm going to have a string. So what I'm going to return a string, 
but it's going to be wrapped in a future. Okay, just remember, like I said, you click on something, you download it. That thing that you download is a future with a file inside of it. Okay, so this is, it's kind of like a, 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 a like a lit list. And it's really dark. I can't even see where I'm typing. Int. Okay, so it's like that. So if I have a list of integers, this variable is not going to be an integer. It's going to be a list, type list that happens to have integers in it, right? So this, what it's gonna return is a future with a string inside of the future. And so we have to get that string out of the future and that's where it comes right here. The snapshot.data, we get that information out of there. Actually, the, the, this, this value in and of itself comes to here, there's other options, dot error, dot has code. So the, there's other things that it can return but for here i just want to get that information out of there and um keep it as a string so you have to use future some data async remember asynchronous programming again if this is a little bit new um that's a little bit beyond this uh video but there are some other videos if you have any questions about the future and asynchronous programming please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section but i think it's in i have in some other previous videos in dart and then we're going to wait for the future dot delayed and we're just going to wait a little bit and give it a pause for five seconds and then return thanks for waiting okay which is again a string right inside of here but return as a future so it's going to come back inside of here it's the variable snapshot is going to have that value and it's going to type that out instead and so what it looks like is working wait five seconds the information gets sent forward thanks for waiting okay so this is just a super simple meaningless application then this is just to simulate um just you know going to a uh, website or something like that when it sends that information forward but this i just wanted to make a super simple example just so that we can get the basics and in the future when we're going to access like um websites databases um, information on the drive in and of itself the, the phone memory itself we're, we're going to need to use futures to make the programming go as quick as possible and that's a, a built-in function of Dart and Flutter. Okay, so um, I hope that was helpful. Let's keep moving on. Thanks.